Right. Good morning. Welcome to day three of Professional Beauty 2009. Thank you all for coming this morning. I'm particularly pleased it's the last day because it means I can eat carbohydrate again. So uh, I'm very, very happy with that. Although, can I just say, half a stone in two weeks, so I'm particularly pleased with that. My name's Andy, as it says up there. I run a men's salon in North Hampshire, and 85% of my business is waxing. So I spend all day, every day, pretty much ripping the hair out of the men of Hampshire. So I go home at the end of each day feeling pretty relaxed, pretty chilled out, as, as you can imagine. And what we're going to do today, I'm going to share with you five top tips to boost your male waxing business, to attract wax and keep the guys coming back for more. I'm then going to do a demo, a back wax and a neck wax on, on my model here. Uh, and then we're going to have some, some questions and answers from you. So just a just quick show of hands before we start. How many people here already offer some kind of male waxing service in their, in their salons? Yeah? Okay. Good. Most of you. How many of you don't offer it yet but, but want to start doing so? Yeah? Excellent. Good. That's what we like to hear. Well, male waxing is one of the fastest growing sectors of the professional male industry, male grooming industry. As more and more men up and down the country discover the benefits for themselves of smooth, hair-free skin. So it really is a fast-growing sector. Now, if you've never waxed a man before, if you've never done it at college, or you don't get many chaps coming through your doors at the salon, thought of spreading hot wax onto a hairy back might fill you with a little bit of trepidation, or it might fill you with glee. <laughs> you know who you are out there. But either way, a little bit of insider knowledge goes a long way to making the whole experience more comfortable for yourself and, more importantly, more comfortable for your client as well. So with that in mind, we're going to take a little look at our male waxing battle plan. Five top tips, as I said, which sounded so much better when I was rehearsing it in my bedroom this morning. So the first tip that I want to share with you is flexible pricing. When it comes to hair, no two customers are created equally. You are not going to spend the same amount of time and use the same amount of product waxing my carefully harvested three chest hairs compared to somebody, say, of Burt Reynolds' proportions. So your pricing structure needs to allow you the flexibility to wax the hairless, wax the gorillas, charge a fair price, and more importantly, make a good living from it as well. And the easiest way to do this is to introduce a flexible pricing structure. I want us to get away from this whole notion of one price fits all in the waxing industry. So consider a flexible pricing structure. And there's two ways of doing this. You can either quote on your price list the maximum charge and let customers know that prices will be reduced for partial hair growth. Or you can state your to and your from prices. So for example, back and chest wax from 20 to 30 pounds. Whatever you do, please don't just say back and shoulder waxing from 30 pounds. Because as a customer myself, that's a personal pet peeve. All that tells me as a customer is when I get to the till, I'm not going to be paying 20 pounds. I'm going to be paying more than that. So it just prevents any nasty shocks when your customer gets to the till if they know what your maximum price is as well. Three reasons, three benefits of having a flexible pricing structure. Sorry, your upper limit of your pricing structure, your upper limit should always be slightly more than you can ever imagine charging a customer. And there are three reasons for this. First of all, especially in these credit crunch times, everybody likes to get a bargain. So you're never going to charge them the maximum price. Secondly, nobody likes to think that they're the hairiest beast alive. So if you don't you're always charging them a couple of quid less than the maximum price, it's a nice ego boost, even for the really hairy gorillas out there. And finally, if you have, say, if you're offering a Brazilian wax and you're charging between 40 and 60 pounds, and if somebody, say, wants the, the lower back waxed or just the speeder line top of the thighs waxed, you can incorporate that into your flexible pricing structure without having to say to them, okay, that's going to be an extra 10, 15 pounds. Now, of course, if they are going to then say, right, I want half my legs, my underarms, and my eyebrows done, you're going to have to have that conversation with them. It's, it's extra price. But that flexible pricing structure just gives you a little bit of room. So secondly, you want to be explaining yourself. Now, hands up, who remembers their first ever salon wax and the fear <laughs> that you had perhaps sitting on that couch for the first time? Now, it's probably fair to say, because we're in the industry, that we may have had some kind of insider knowledge beforehand, either from our mums, perhaps our sisters, a friend, perhaps a magazine article. Now, as guys... We don't tend to go down to the pub and talk about this with our mates. And if we do, we can bet your bottom dollar that we're going to be ribbed mercilessly for us. As guys, our point of reference is the 40-year-old virgin. 
So your chaps are going to probably be feeling a little bit nervous. So before your client even makes that first appointment, you want to be letting them know um, as much about the treatment as you can do. So frequently asked questions on your website is always a good idea. Perhaps some waxing information left in your salon for people to take home. And target your female clients as well. Let them know that you're offering this service. Because the power of female persuasion, ladies, is not to be underestimated, as I'm sure you know. Now, once he's plucked up the courage to make that appointment, take the time to explain the procedure to him, talk him through it, answer any questions that he's got before you get him on that treatment couch. Because most wax virgins won't know why you're cleaning, why you're powdering up, and what that sticky gloop is you've slapped on his red bits at the end is for. So talk him through every step of the way. It will make the whole procedure that much more comfortable for him. He knows what to expect. With your aftercare as well, very important, write it down and give it to him each and every time he comes to see you. Now, this is actually an insurance requirement for a lot of providers out there. But whether it is or whether it isn't, you need to be providing written aftercare advice for your guys so they can take it home, refer to it, and give them permission to give you a call if they get stuck on anything as well. Mow the lawn. Men are hairy in general. Not all men. Most, gen most men are hairy. Anything longer than an inch, hair-wise, <laughs> you need to trim before you get started. That will prevent the hair getting matted in the wax, so it'll hurt less, and it'll mean you can see the direction of hair growth easier as well. So trim with a pair of clippers or some scissors before you start. If you do a lot of men's waxing, I can really recommend investing in a pair of good quality hairdressing clippers. Cordless are great because it means you can walk all the way around the table. The difference between the hairdressing trimmers that you buy professionally and the ones that you get, say, from your high street stores, they've got removable stainless steel blades. So the blades last longer, and it means that you can take them off and clean them properly at the end of your service. So just brush the hair out, spray them with a hard surface disinfectant. You don't need to sterilize them because we're not piercing the skin. We're just trimming the hair. Clean your plastic guards in hot soapy water. Dunk them in your barbicide. Make sure they're, they're disinfected, and then you're ready to go for your next client. One little word of advice if you are mobile, just make sure that this is uh, easy to get to in your suitcase and doesn't go off if you're on public transport because it can be very embarrassing. People give you funny looks. Happened to me the other day. I, d I wanted to kind of whip it out of my suitcase and go, no, it's a clipper, it's a clippers, and I use it to shave other men's scrotums. But I thought that probably actually wasn't a good idea. Make matters even worse. So mow the lawn. It's great if you've got a pair of these clippers as well because a lot of guys now are opting to have their chest trimmed rather than waxed. Fashions change, as we know. So a lot of guys are getting their backs waxed and they want to uh, combine that with a chest trim. So a pair of those clippers makes short work of hairy monsters. This is the, the be nice principle. This is a plea on behalf of the brotherhood. Please be nice to us. Whichever way you cut it, Ripping hair out by the root is always going to have a certain amount of ouch factor to it. So the nicer you are to us, the more likely we are to come back. Let's be honest, men have a lower pain threshold than women anyway. It's a fact. You get colds, we get flu. So we do feel a little bit more to start with, so please just be nice to us. And it will make us, we're big softies at heart, and we will come back for more. Finally, this is two tips in one, so two for the price of one. Get yourself online. What that means, two things. First of all, get yourself a website. I don't care if it's a one-page price list or a 60-page all singing, all dancing, waxing extravaganza. Get yourself online. Men shop differently to women. The vast majority of male clients will Google your services before they make an initial inquiry. So if you are not online in this day and age, you are invisible to the majority of potential male clients out there. So get yourself a website. You can get them for free. There is no excuse not to be online these days. And it's actually, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Secondly, get online and educate yourself. Your education with waxing does not stop the minute you learn how to pick up that spatula. As with any other aspect of the beauty industry, things change, things advance. We get new ingredients, new application methods, customer trends change over time, and yet waxing is one of the most neglected areas when it comes to continuing professional development in this industry. We quite rightly spend a lot of time and effort investing in our ongoing education for skincare, new ingredients, new services that we want to offer to our clients, 